any ideas? And hello oh, and welcome to Alex Canex Sandbox MTG Study Session 116. My name is Alex and today we will continue to study Magic Gathering. Um, yes, so I actually didn't launch anything, unfortunately. Uh, let me let me launch everything, prepare everything. So wait a second, uh, we need to launch a lot of stuff. So. There is a problem with bitrate, I don't know what's happening, it's kind of dr like dropping, then getting back higher, it's super weird. It seems like relatively consistent, but there's some inconsistency to the bitrate. Uh, hopefully we're not... Mm, there's no need into relaunching the stream, but uh, there's might a possibility that we should do that, maybe. I don't know, if it's actually going to kind of break uh, for a lot of times, then we will of course probably relaunch the stream. Uh, but again, um, provide your feedback, uh, feedback, how is bitrate, like do you have any drops or not, because it's, it's pretty weird, truly. Maybe I just launched the stream too fast and didn't give a chance for the OBS to kind of catch up with the internet, I don't know, sometimes it happens, you kind of allow and change the program, and if you're not going to give it a little bit more time to settle, it's going to basically Okay, the last thing we need to watch is intellectual maps or mind maps. And once they're going to be launched, I want to close everything that involves uh, my creative streams, basically my fundamentals and etc. And we're going to open intellectual map that is created specifically for Magic the Gathering. Oh snap, yeah, there's a definitely problems in, in Betrayed. It's kind of... I don't know. There's a drops. There's a lot of frame drops. Yeah, apparently we should actually restart the stream. Let's just do exactly that. Um, yeah, I'm going to relaunch the stream, unfortunately. So, see you in a bit. Or not. No, it kind of continues to drop. Continues to drop. Maybe it's just me. No, it actually doesn't drop that much. No, it actually doesn't drop that much. No, it actually drop. Yeah, let's just continue the way that it is because we're not playing the game. Uh, it, this is just a study session, so we're just going to study magic. That's kind of it. So I don't believe that we need a super high bitrate in here. And the bitrate that usually here, it's usually it's going to happen. Like it's going to be more than enough. Um, if frame is going to drop, it's not that big of a deal, because in most cases, the most important thing that I believe sound is going to be present, 
And that's it, because again, in this type of streams there's not much visuals. So yeah, uh, today we continue to study basically our vintage sets. Uh, previously we finished Alphabet Unlimited and right now we are studying Alf, uh, Arabian Nights. So there's a 92 card set, so there's not that many cards. Um, so let's just now figure out where we stopped on studying the set and get back to it. MTG study. Again, today's session is going to be a two-hour session. The first part of the session we're going to study magic that way, and the second part of the session we're going to uh, actually play Magic Arena and play study it. Uh, by the way, today I'm going to, in Magic Arena, uh, try a new event, uh, or new format, which is, I, I believe, um, called Mimir, Mimir, whatever. Uh, it's a pretty interesting format, D never tried it, uh, so it's going to be an interesting one. So yep, here our intellectual map uh, with magic study. Let's go. Uh, so let's just first figure out what was the last card that we stopped with. So the last card was gender ring, gender's ring, um, which is exactly here. So basically, this card, the last card you drew this turn and draw a card. So one of the reasons why I actually decided to stop on this card and kind of focus a little bit more attention to it is because uh, when we're discarding a card, like, we already established the ability, the pure ability of discarding a card. And we established the separate ability of drawing a card, but we didn't necessarily establish the ability that allows us to discard the last card you drew this turn. Which is completely unique kind of um, circumstance that added to this ability, which works basically with the last something that you drew, the last something that basically uh, attacked. For instance, we could apply this ability into anything. I mean, um, we're not going to necessarily take the, the whole thing. We're going to copy it as a specification, I believe. Let's just do exactly that. So yeah, we're going to create a specification. A specification is going to be exactly that. So uh, pay, pay price, um, pay x, uh, tap it and then discard the last card you drew this turn, and for that, basically, you will draw a card. Hi there, Zaza. Uh, today's stream on English, so if you want to, like, uh, converse, uh, go into the conversation in, Ru in, in, in Russian, you can. Uh, so I'm going to kind of switch into Russian uh, if you want, so... But in most cases, this session is going to be in English, because magic is all in English. Um, Hopefully it's understandable. И еще раз повторю то же самое на русском. В общем, э, говорю, я буду в основном стримить на английском э, эту сессию. Вот, если интересно пообщаться на русском и задавать какие-то вопросы, да, то есть как бы задавайте на русском, я отвечу на них на русском, а потом снова переключусь на английский. Основная причина, почему я и все это делаю на английском, потому что э, Magic Set и это, собственно, вот эта игра Magic Gathering. Э, большая часть старых сетов имеют э, Английские, в общем, у них нету перевода, поэтому практически вся карта на английском языке, тут практически нет ни одной карты на русском, вот, и мы фактически просто разбираемся с ними, изучаем их, и я их изучаю для того, чтобы в будущем создавать свои собственные карточные игры такого типа, ну или другого типа, да, у меня есть парочку игр уже в разработке, и, в общем... Первую часть, первый час мы будем фактически из двух часов вот так вот заниматься, грубо говоря, изучением этой игры, разбирать обилки карт, на что они способны и так далее, подобное на английском. И уже потом, вторая часть сессии, мы будем непосредственно играть в эту игру на компьютере, ну, в общем, в Magic Arena, эту закрытую бету. Вот. И если что, я раздаю ключики, так что если вам эта игра будет интересна, я могу даже вам ключик на халявочку отдать, вы можете в нее поиграть. Вот. Правда, придется регистрировать игру и так далее и подобное, потому что она еще в закрытой бете, но тем не менее. И переключаемся на русский. Ой, на английский. So, um, basically, uh, getting back to our intellectual maps. Um, so, the basic thing that this card is basically does, you may pay X, then you can tap this card, and then you can discard the least or the last card you drew this turn, and for that you will draw a card. So one thing that kind of interests me the most is the discard the least card you drew this turn. So we need to establish this one as a separate ability, and I believe it's actually going to be a pretty interesting one. I mean, I definitely see potential in it. So discard the last card you drew this turn, and let's just try to generalize it. So ideally it needs to be based on 
the last element. So it's going to be a hard one to come up with an explanation that is going to fit. Um, this card, the, the last card you drew this turn. Like... Okay, let's just try that. The last card... No. The last action, the last in-game action that was performed this turn, yep, the last in-game action that was performed this turn or had been performed, we're not going to think about grammar at this point. So the last in-game action that was performed this turn... Um, the last in-game action that was performed this turn... Will... Okay, pay X, tap, discard the last card you drew this turn, and draw a card. So again... We need to pay a certain price, we need to tap it, we need to discard a card, and then draw a card. So we're losing something in order to, to get something. Okay, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to generalize though. Um, the last in-game action that was performed this turn uh, triggers... What? Triggers the card ability. Yeah, let's just do that. So, the only thing we're going to establish as a general one is the last in-game action that was performed this turn triggers the card ability. So, it's kind of general. So, again, we could attack with the creature and this attack could trigger this card to perform this action. So, again, in this particular instance, the action is this card, the last card you drew and this turn and then draw a card. So, it's basically going to help us to um, do exactly that. The last in-game action that was performed this turn triggers the cards, uh, the cards ability. Basically, just cards ability or the card ability. Yep, that's it. Continuing. Um, by the way, one of the th one of the cool things about Magic, why I'm kind of getting uh, drawn to the Magic, because this game actually has a lot of awesome arts to it, and most of the artists artists they actually getting um, pushed by this game so there's a lot of artists that I admire because they are creating for magic um, it's not necessarily deep art in here it's kind of still commercial art but sometimes since it explains the cards abilities it's still pretty awesome I mean you, you could get inspired by a lot of art from magic not old one but like the new ones so there's a lot of cool art in here there's a lot of cards and hopefully someday I will draw for magic. This is kind of one of the ideas. It could be awesome. So yeah, continue. So the next card is going to be a... We're not going to read the name. Uh, it's, this is an artifact, which means that it's a permanent. Uh, you can pay three, tap it, and then tap target creature. We already covered. So again, it's just you pay a certain price, this price, you tap it, and you will untap target creature. Continues. Um, so... Okay, remove uh, Jeweled Pert from your deck before playing, if you're not playing for Anti. Oh, okay, this is again the thing with Anti. Uh, this is kind of a pretty interesting terminology, I didn't necessarily understood it before. But as I properly understand what Anti means, is basically, uh, if we're going to put it and translate it, um, it means that you have a priority in a turn. So basically, the anti in this particular uh, it doesn't mean stavka. It means uh, basically prerogative. So if you're playing first, it, if this is kind of your turn or something like this, or you have the advantage, then you will be able to. I guess it works with the beginning of the game. So yeah, remove this bird from your deck before playing it, uh, if you are not playing for NG. So, 
it establishes who is going to go first. Yep. So we have two players, one player, uh, so basically you will flip a coin or whatever and the player that basically uh, won chooses who is going to go first. And those, uh, that player who has a choice, what this is means this thing for anti. This is pretty thing, like pretty weird thing for me personally. At the beginning, I didn't understood what it means, uh, but now I'm pretty close to it, I guess. So again, let's just think about it. Remove jeweled bird from your deck before playing. If you're not playing for anti, so if you don't have a priority of choice um, to go first or give the first turn to the opponent, then you will remove this thing from your deck. Okay, this is interesting. anti jeweled bird, if you do put all other cards you own from the anti into your graveyard, then draw a card. Oh snap, this is super confusing. Okay, we're not going to deal with that today. It's too complicated, I don't necessarily understand what it means. I mean... Okay, yeah, we're not going to deal with it. It's too much. I'm not, I don't understand it 100%, and because of that we're just going to put it in here. And we're going to deal with it later. It's definitely going to help us at some point. Because this is an interesting concept, so it basically will allow us to do in interesting things in the future. Once we will understand how this anti actually works. Because again, I'm not 100% sure, sure what it that, what it means in this game necessarily. Especially when we need to perform this anti with, with the card itself, it's weird. And if you do, you will put other cards you own from the anti into the graveyard. Then draw a card. Like, what the anti-zone means. I, I don't get it. Like, truly don't get it. Okay, we need to establish some type of a question mark in here, because this is one of the things that I not 100% understand. Just go into the markers, find symbols, and put a question mark there. Because, yep, this is exactly a question mark one. This is, happens not rarely, but occasionally we're going to run in into some type of problems like this, and we need to deal with those. Okay, this is a name. <laughs> um, when this card basically enters the battlefield, choose a color and an opponent. While creatures get plus, white creatures get plus two plus one, as long as the chosen player controls a non-token permanent of the chosen color. And when the chosen player controls non-token permanents, no token permanents, basically there's no token non-token uh, non permanent under his control of the chosen color sacrifice it so okay this is permanent it answers the battlefield as an enchantment as long as this card in play you choose a color and you choose opponent white creatures get plus two plus one as long as the chosen player controls a non-token permanent of the chosen color Oh snap, this is the choice based ability, it's pretty complex, I mean it has a lot of kind of structure to it. So we're going to discard the fact that, it card, uh, that the, this card enters the battlefield and after it enters the battlefield it basically sets the trigger of choice. We're not going to cover that because in most cases we already covered it. One thing that we need to cover though is how this thing works like in conjunction with that. So, when you choose a color and you choose an opponent, your, your white creatures will get a perk as long as the chosen player that you basically chosen here controls a non-token permanent, which is a regular creature, of the chosen color. Oh snap, this is complex. Ugh. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple to understand, but it's complex in terms of breaking down to general ability, which is, for me, a problem. When the chosen player controls no non-token permanence of the chosen color sacrifice, so this card not going to stay in the game for a long time. One, like, for instance, um, if opponent controls a non-token permanent, this thing will work. If this non-token creature dies, we're going to sacrifice this enchantment. So basically going to lose it. 
So because of this, it's kind of a complex stuff. I mean, there's so many kind of... Ugh. I hate those type of hard uh, combinations because it's pretty hard to generalize them. They're too specific. Chose a color and an opponent. The creature, your creatures will get a perk, a certain in-game perk as long as the chosen player controls something of that color. Yeah, I guess let's just try to do that. Ugh, too general, uh, or too, too specific. I hate specific abilities, because it's pretty hard to make something out of them. Specific abilities for me personally, it's a headache. Okay, choose a color and an opponent. So you basically have uh, two choices. We uh, have in, in our second intellectual map um, choice-based abilities. I guess at some point it, it will go here. Um, we also have a choice between based abilities, which basically allows us to choose between uh, two existing choices. But right here, we're not necessarily choosing between two existing, po like, we able to choose e every color that it's on a game, so five colors in the game, we could choose a a one of our five colors, and there's infinite amount of opponents that we could play against. So because of this, we kind of have a lot of choices in here. Mm. So choose a color and, and an opponent, then... Uh, We're not going to establish white, it doesn't matter. Um, your creatures... ...will get a certain perk. Yep, your creatures will get a certain per perk as long as chosen player, the one that you chose before, basically the opponent, um, uh, chosen player controls a non-token permanent. Okay, this is too specific, we need to get rid of the non-token permanent and just establish a card of the chosen color. So it could be a creature, it could be an artifact, it could be truly anything. So. Yeah, your creatures will get a certain perk as long as the chosen player controls a card of the chosen color. When the chosen player controls no such cards, card or cards, okay, no cards of the chosen color, sacrifice it. Yep. But it uh, means that this card that basically gives this ability. This card. Okay. Um, choose a color and an opponent. Yep. Your creatures will get a certain perk as long as the chosen player controls a card of the chosen color. Mm -hmm. And when the chosen player controls no cards of the chosen color, sacrifice this card. And I just go with this card. Mm. Sacrifice this card. Okay, we need to establish when this card enters the battlefield. To not confuse ourselves in the future. When this card enters the battlefield. Enters battlefield. Thank you for the correction! Um, so, when this card enters the battlefield, uh, choose a color. Yep, so now it works. Good. And I guess in order to know where we get this, we might copy this one as a specification. Although no, I don't believe so that we need that. 
it's pretty clear. I mean, for me it's clear, and as long as it's clear for me, it's completely fine. We're good to make this one work in the future. Right now it's clear. Continuing. How much time we have? Again, unfortunately we don't have that much time by studying this thing. Uh, this is the only day that I am able to study this, unfortunately. Uh, so, kind of one hour a week on studying, it, it's going super slow. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice uh, this creature unless you pay X. Again, you have to pay a certain double price, which is right here, two symbols of mana, um, in order to keep it in the game. So, other way is going to die, so you have to sacrifice it. Which is pretty cool, but again, we already established all types of abilities that work with paying certain price in order to keep something in the game. Um, and I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, which is the beginning of your turn, uh, Jean deals one damage to you. I don't like these type of cards. I get the. I guess the only reason why this card basically gives us harm, it basically hits us. This is our card and it basically deals damage to us personally. Uh, it's to create a balance because this Jean is pretty big. It costs. Uh, it basically his power and toughness is five five. Um, and he costs pretty low, so because his his cost is four, this is kind of the way to balance things and makes this card make this card less cheaty, cheaty. So, yep, we're not going to put that one. It's pretty clear. At the beginning of each end step, put a plus one plus one counter on Ghoul for each creature that died this turn. Okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, I don't remember if I actually established this thing. So, for instance, you will put on a creature. A plus one plus one counters equal to the creature creatures that died this turn. Um, since I don't believe if I actually put that one or not. For each okay, let's just try to find it though. We have a search in here. Maybe we actually have it. Who knows? We might. Find and replace. Find Okay, so for each creature that died. Okay, died this turn, I believe this is something that will work in search. Nope, we don't have it here. Let's just search it in here then. Okay, we have something. Uh, you or your creatures will get something for each creature that died this turn. Yep, we actually put this ability in here. So we have it. Oh, snap. Where is it? I lost it. You or your creatures. Yeah, here it is. You or your creatures will get something for each creature that died this turn. For each creature, creature that died this turn, could be anything that can be measured. So, we could basically replace creatures, as I established in here, with something else. So we're not going to think about this ability uh, as an application to only creatures, we actually could think about it as like an applied to artifacts, to enchantments, to any types of permanence that you can count and measure. So like how many cards we have in, in our hand for instance, we could even apply this thing to this. So it's actually a pretty cool one. Cool, continue. Okay, skipping that, and uh, the fact that uh, it allows us to put plus one plus one counters is not that important because we already established that magic has so many counter types, it's just basically crazy. Um, so, again, this is kind of com combined ability. We have the first part of the ability uh, at the beginning of each end step, which establishes the exact time when this ability will trigger. We have a second part, which is basically a action. Uh, that is going to put plus one plus one counter on this card and then we have a condition that has to be met in order for this abil uh, ability to get triggered. So again, this is just a combination of multiple things and there's no point of putting all things together. We have all separate um, ingredients and then we're just going to combine them together. Continue. So destroy target Jin or uh, Ifrit. Ifrit. Ooh. I want to I wanna translate that. Yep, this is exactly Ifrit's. Ifrit. 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 Okay, I know it's in Russian though. Ifrit. Ifrit. Oh, damn. Okay. 
So, um, weird ape. By the way, I remember this ape from later sets. So we actually probably have uh, this ape with better art. Let's see it. Yep, I actually have this ape. Yep, I probably have this ape in, in my collection. If I'm be if I'm not mistaken, because it seems like it's super super. Yeah, like I saw it already. Okay, cool. We have about half an hour to study, which is cool. Kind of goes through the kind of a progression. Sometimes we stuck, we getting stuck on one big ability, and we're spending for probably twenty minutes to deal with this ability. But sometimes it's much quicker if we already established something. So again, for this ape, it's pretty easy. This ape is just going to get a perk, which is buff, um, as long as you permanent buff as long as you control a forest. Yep, it's pretty cool. If you have a forest, which is the type of land, you will be able to make this uh, ape instead of 1-1, one, 2-3, one, uh, which is cool. Draw a card, activate this ability only if you have exactly 7 cards in hand. Again, something similar where it established, I mean, you're able to draw a card and by tapping this card only if certain conditions are met and the conditions are you have to have exactly seven cards in your hand so i don't believe that we need to establish that one it's pretty clear let's just check the sound again for hand so yeah i'm hearing myself good so blue creatures don't untap during their controllers untap step okay again uh, untap steps it's it's pretty confusing we never dealt with on top, on top steps, probably. At the beginning, by the way, of the game, I was constantly confused myself with these untapped steps. It's It was pretty confusing. So, blue creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step. So, at the beginning of each uh, opponent's turn, creatures are usually getting untapped. And this is a separate uh, phase or step, which called an untap step. Um, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, which is basically follows after untap step. Yep, if I properly remember. That player may choose any number of tapped blue creatures they control and pay four for each creature chosen this way. If the player does do that, perform all those actions, you will untap those creatures. Okay, it's actually pretty clear. It might seem confusing, uh, but it's actually pretty clear. So again, uh, let's just get rid of the blue element, so we're not going to establish color in here. Um, creatures don't untap during their controllers on top step. Let's just put this one in a general thing and try to explain it. Okay, hello Arabian Knights in... boom. So creatures don't untap during their controllers on top step. We're going to keep that one. Uh, because it's specific for magic, and depending on what type of game we're going to create, it could have a completely different turn structure. Uh, so magic, for instance, has this type of structure, which has an untap step, beginning uh, of the player's upkeep, uh, the first main phase, the second main phase, the in-betweens, and a lot of certain things. Again, once we will play magic, if you're not familiar with magic, uh, in 30 minutes, you will be able to see what I'm talking about. But in most cases, this is... Um, yeah, we're going to keep it for magic. We're not going to generalize it. It's still pretty cool. So, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player, that player may choose any number of tapped creatures. But again, we're going to get rid of the blue. Blue right here adds uh, added just as a specification because... If we're going to make all creatures unactive during the turn, it doesn't necessarily give us any control. Um, so because of this, I guess we need to specify creatures. Yeah, other way this ability kind of pointless. So creatures of certain type, creatures of certain type don't untap during their controllers on top step. And this certain type also is going to be applied in here. So at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may choose any number of tapped creatures of certain type. Uh, 
basically the same type as we established in here. Uh, they control and pay X. We're not going to establish what exactly opponent needs to pay for that or player has to pay for that. Um, the X amount for each creature chosen this way. If player doesn't, untap those creatures. So in order to keep those creatures tapped, so basically unactive, we have to do this. This is actually a pretty awesome ability. I definitely dig it. I mean, it has a lot of awesome potentials. So it kind of stops opponent cre opponent's creatures from attacking. And, and if you're going to pay a certain price, uh, X, for instance, for each of those creatures, then they will they will become uh, they will continue to stay unactive. If you want them to start to act, you have to um, so basically, if you have no mana to pay, they will become active and they will be able to attack. So this is pretty interesting element of control. So you able to control the creatures of the opponent as long as you have mana to pay for it which is pretty cool i believe this is awesome ability cool 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 cool, cool. continue merchant ship can't attack unless defending player controls an island uh, whenever a merchant ship attacks and isn't blocked uh, you gain two life when you control no islands sacrifice merchant ship okay let's just read it again so merchant ship can't attack so it can't attack, it's just stand still, unless defending player, which is our opponent, controls an island. So again, certain conditions has to be met in order for this creature to behave that way. So this creature can't attack if opponent controls an island. Okay. And whenever Manchant's ship attacks, and isn't blocked if opponent decides not to block it, you will gain to life. Oh snap, there's a lot of combinations in here. When you control no islands, when you control no islands, sacrifice this one. Hm. That's weird. I mean, it's pretty cool ability. It actually makes this creature pretty cool. It's pointless. Again, this creature can't deal any damage. But the cool thing about this damage, it kind of provokes opponent into either blocking or not blocking. And if opponent is not going to block, then we're going to gain life. So I guess this is a cho choice-based ability, I believe. So again, opponent has choice either block or not block. It, it also has the element of conditioning. Um, we're not going to add the conditions in here. I don't believe that it's important. Mention can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Again, this type of ability we already established. This is already established. There's no need to create another one version of it. But what's what I'm interested in is this. Whatever mention ship attacks and isn't blocked, you gain two life. And this element is kind of not important too. Again, when you control no islands, you will sacrifice this ship. Uh, so it's again a condition that makes this creature leave battlefield uh, which is not yeah we're not going to establish it so the only thing that it's important for me is in is this one so just try to generalize it whenever mentioned ship attacks and isn't blocked you gain two lives two life we're going to whenever this creature Whenever this creature attacks and isn't blocked, you gain to life. You gain something. Uh, okay. A certain in-game perk. In this particular instance, you can you could gain life. Your creatures could become bigger, this creature could get plus two, plus two, or whatever. Uh, you can draw additional cards, so it's infinite possibilities in here. Mm, whenever this creature attacks and isn't blocked. I don't believe that it works with the choice, though. If we're going to look at the opponent's side, opponent definitely needs to have a choice, either block or not block. And depending on that, we're going to get something or not get something in return. But it's not applicable to the opponent. 
it's applicable to us in this particular for for uh, structure of the sentence. So whenever this creature attacks and isn't blocked, you gain a certain in-game perk. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. That's kind of cool. Works. Continuing. Sorcery. So, okay, this is pretty weird art. Damn. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Um, add X mana of any one color where X is the one plus the sacrificed creature's cover converted mana cost. Spend this mana only to cast creature spell. Okay, as additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. We already covered that, so in order to play the spell, we have to pay additional cost and sacrifice a creature. We already established that separately. Uh, usually this is prerogative of the goblins. Goblins love that. They love to... Uh, and red spells, usually. So it's pretty weird to see this ability in green, because red spells are usually aggressive, and they usually have this ability, you have to sacrifice a creature in order to play the spell. But apparently right now we have this one in the green. Um, add X mana of any one color. So basically you will add additional mana where X is a plus one or one, pl one plus sacrificed creatures convert mana cost. So if creature that you sacrifice mana cost costs one, you will basically get two mana. Yep. If mana cost is three, you will get three plus one and etc. So depending on what type of creature you will sacrifice, you will get an additional mana which will help you to play more spells during the turn. Okay, it's pretty clear, but again, how to generalize it, though? And do we need to generalize it? This is a question. Where X is a 1 plus the sacrifice creatures converted mana cost, spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Um, okay, we have a kind of an element of control, so we're not able to play any types of spells with this mana that we're going to gain from this uh, interaction. What we be able to do is to spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Hmm. Let's just break it down. Break it down, because it's too complex of an ability that has multiple kind of things, and I don't know how to generalize it. Because it's too specific. Again, I hate too specific abilities. So, as an additional cost to cast this creature spell, sacrifice a creature. That would cover it. Not going to cover it. Then you will be able to gain X mana, additional mana, of any one color, where X is basically one plus the sacrificed creature that you sacrificed, Covenantric mana cost. Yeah, I actually don't believe that we need to put this one uh, into our intellectual map or mind map, because in most cases, I believe I already covered something that involves converted mana cost. So you will get mana equal to the converted, converted mana cost of a certain card. So all these things we kind of already established before, I believe. Yep, definitely remember something like this. It's just kind of a complicates things. It's just multiple simple abilities that are connected together, which creates this kind of complexity. And yeah, and this is basically just allows us to control the behavior of the card and restricts the usage of mana that we have. Yep, spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Yeah, we're not going to cover it. The only thing though that I will do is like add a element of restriction. This is something that kind of I don't believe that I actually established. So let's just add this one as a specification and try to generalize it this way. Um, You have a restriction in how exactly you will be able to use your resources. I guess it's going to be the most general explanation ever. Uh, it's going to apply to anything, not only to mana. You have a certain restrictions. You have a certain restrictions uh, to use. your resources, in-game resources. Okay, 
Oh, step. The right spelling. Crazy. <laughs> I barely know this word in terms of the spelling. Uh, you have a certain restrictions to use your in-game resources. Yeah, that's it. You have a certain restrictions to use your in-game resources. So basically, you're not, you're not able to, for instance, spend mana uh, to cast a certain creature types, for instance. Uh, there there's could be a restriction added that basically prohibits you from playing a card um, with more than 5 toughness or more than 5 power or whatever. So again, there's infinite possibilities to this kind of general explanation, I believe. So you have a certain restrictions to, you, to use your in-game resources. Yep, I'll just phrase it that way exactly. And as, as as an example, we have spent this mana only to cast creature spells, and the rest is just the limits of your imagination. Uh, if you know magic, you will come up with so many ideas for this explanation that you could create the comp like the whole game out of it, which is pretty cool. So whenever this gene attacks, the next one, flip a coin. Oh snap! Again, flip coins. I hate random generators. Truly. They definitely add fun into the game, but flipping a coin, throwing the dice, is, this is something that I fed up once we dealt with unsets. Unsets basically was were crazy uh, in terms of flipping a coin and throwing the dice, and my brain basically... Uh, I can't control something that couldn't be controlled, and because flipping a coin and rolling the dice, this is something that you can't control, it's pretty hard to come up with a general explanation for it. And for me personally, flipping your coins and throwing the dice is... it's... Blech. I don't know. So yeah, either way, let's just figure out if we actually covered it or not. So, whenever this basically creature attacks, you flip a coin. If you lose the flip, you will remove this gin from the combat and tap it. We're not going to cover it because it's pretty simple. I mean... If you... Again, you flip a coin, if you lose a flip, you have to lose something. If you win a flip, nothing will happen, and this creature will continue to attack. So... Actually not. Mm. There is a specific to it. Let's just try to find our dice rolling abilities. We have them somewhere on top. La, 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 la. So here they are. So roll uh, multiple sided die or any random generator. In this particular instance we have flipping coins, we have dices. So we have already a thing that basically allows us to flip a coin. If you win the flip, you will get something. If you lose the flip, you will lose something. But what we have to add is the additional thing that basically has... that we have in here. Um, if you lose a flip, you will lose something. But if you win the flip, nothing will happen. So this is a possibility too. And I believe we need to add this one here as a specification because it's it's completely different action. So if you lose something, then you will lose something. And if you win, you will get something. Uh, but in this particular instance, we're not necessarily when we're winning the flip, we're not getting anything. We just it just allows us to perform the same action that this card would would be would perform regardless. Because of this, I believe we need to actually put this one as an additional specification. So again, if you lose a flip, you will lose something. But if you win a flip, if you win a flip, uh the action will proceed. Hopefully this is the right word. The action will... Oh, oh snap! If you lose the flip, you're not losing something. The action is cancelled. Yeah! That's it. It's going to be a completely separate ability. If you lose the flip, the action will be cancelled. With consequences. Consequences. Oh, this is going to be a definitely correction. Uh, consequences. Ugh. 
cancelled. If you lose the flip, the action will be cancelled with consequences. If you win the flip, the action will proceed with no consequences. Without consequences, we're going to copy it. Yep, and we need to establish this one then as a separate ability because it's kind of a different thing altogether. It's not the same as just winning a flip and, and getting something or not getting something. It gives... It works with the action, which is different. Yep, uh, flip a coin. Uh, so again, uh, flip a coin first, of course. Okay, we're pretty close to finish. We have like five minutes, so we're not going to go that long. I mean, uh, I guess we're going to cover a couple of cards and then we're going to switch to playing magic. Uh, so flip a coin. If you lose the flip, the action will be cancelled with consequences. And if you win the flip, the action will proceed without consequences. Let's just translate that one in order to understand if I actually put it right. I might. Если вы проиграете флип, действие, действие будет продолжаться без последствий. Yep, exactly that. So, the action will proceed without consequences. Exactly that. Skibidi papum. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Here it is. So, yeah, this is kind of it, I guess. So, um... Yeah. So, again, we have about, like, five minutes, so let's just quickly go through as, as much cards as possible. So Trample, just a regular card that allows us to deal damage through the through the blocking creature. Um, again, if you're not familiar with, with Trample, again, it's, it basically works like if this creature is 3-3 and it's getting blocked by a creature by 2-2, uh, we're going to kill the creature with 2-2 and we're also going to deal one damage to the opponent. So it basically kind of goes through the creature and deals damage to the opponent. Mountain, I guess just a regular mountain, this is mana. It has a lot of, it's present in a lot of sets. Okay, uh, the snake. Whenever this snake deals damage to a player, the player loses one life. Mm-hmm. Like poison. Um, at the beginning of their next draw step, unless they pay one before that draw step. This is actually pretty cool, it actually works like a poison. So basically, once the snake... The only thing I'm interested in how it's going to continue to work at the beginning of their next draw step. Oh yeah, it works only once. So if you attacked with the snake in the previous turn at the beginning of the opponent's draw step, opponent will lose one life unless they pay a price not to lose life before the draw step. And since I believe mana doesn't untap, during the draw step, it means that opponent has to think beforehand, beforehand to maintain at least some type of mana under his or her control. So if opponent has at least one mana towards the end of his turn, then there's going to be our turn, we're going to attack with the snake, we're going to deal up damage to the opponent, and if opponent has one mana to pay for from the previous turn, Opponent will be able to save his life. If not, opponent will lose life. So this is actually a pretty interesting one. I guess this is not going to be today's one. I mean, I definitely need to spend time to think about it. It's it's pretty interesting ability, and we could actually create an interesting thing from it. Oh snap! Not here. Yep, we're not putting things in a flip. This is completely different category. Things are a little bit lagging in here because we are putting things in the freaking queue. Because we have this area, every time that we're creating duplicates inside this area, it takes program some time to work with this, but still. Again, we're almost finished, we're going to switch to Magic Arena in a couple of minutes. Uh, after a break, I'm going to switch uh, title, I'm going to switch things, restart the stream with a different program, and we're going to go into the Magic Arena and we're going to play a uh, Mumir's Madness, which is the new event, which kind of works with tokens. This is a weird thing, I don't know, we're going to establish it. So yeah, the last card that we're going to stop with is this. Mm, this is interesting. I definitely need to, at the, at the beginning of the next session, 
um, go through this card a little bit and try to come up with a general explanation for it. Because again, it has a lot of possibilities. Again, like this is simple, like if we're going to deal damage to a player and um, that player will lose one life at the beginning of their next draw step unless they pay one before that draw step. It basically, the reason why it's complex, because it all revolves around the fact, like, around the turn structure. Depending on the turn structure and how turns are basically distributed, and uh, in terms of the consistency, it will completely change how this ability will behave. And if we will try to generalize this ability to something personal, we need to take it, take this into consideration. And because of this, I believe this ability definitely has potential outside of the magic, which is the whole point. Find how to apply these abilities outside of the magic and hopefully create our own personal games out of something like this. Basically, get inspired by those abilities to create something personal. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to continue with this card next uh, time that we're going to stream this study part of the session. So this is the last card that we stopped. Right away, put this ability. We're going to delete that one, and yeah, I guess we'll see you in a couple of minutes in Magic Arena when we're going to play a Mamir's Madness, uh, the weirdest name ever. But Papir, it's much more weirder name, uh, especially if you're Russian, it gives you a completely different meaning for the word Papir and Mamir. Um, Pupir and Mumir, it's like, eh, whatever, it's fun. So yeah, let's just save, close everything, and... Uh, See you in the second part of the session when we will continue with Magic Arena. I need to close things. Yep, basically see you. <laughs> 